Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing a fountain pen from the brand Tianzi. Now Tianzi is a, a brand that's been around for a little while, but this is kind of their first attempt uh, at a fountain pen and it is the Piston Field Fountain Pen, uh, sometimes known as the T01. Uh, this is the box it comes in. I'm going to leave that up there. Like, this isn't a criticism at all. But um, this is something you find a lot, and I actually wanted to sort of clear this up. Um, so there's a, a range of Chinese characters here, uh, which are traditional characters, sort of uh, in the calligraphy kind of style. Uh, and uh, I have I spoke to a friend of mine who reads this and writes this and sort of got a, it cleared up a little bit, and I've actually written out what it actually said. He... what. It says, the language is very traditional, uh, and it's a complement to the art of uh, Chinese calligraphy. So, um, basically, the first five characters, um, or the first set of characters there, uh, is says that this writing has strength in the body and also doesn't lose its dignity. The second set uh, is, it's really free and relaxed and also elegant. And then the final set there, uh, roughly sort of translate as... Um, the touch of the handwriting feels uh, like moving clouds and the flowing mountain spring. That is a rough translation, not like a, you know, not a perfect translation, but it gives you a, a better idea. Anyway, that's on the box. Um, when you open up the box, it's a fairly standard box. A pen comes in this little sleeve, sitting on the bed there. It is a piston filling pen, so it doesn't come with a cartridge or a converter, of course. Um, it's just the pen. And... This is the pen. I have it here in the dark green acrylic material with, see it there with a beautiful silver chrome colored trim. It is a nice sort of classic looking fountain pen uh, as a piston filling. So I'm gonna cover parts and features, do a writing sample and talk about pros and cons in my opinion. Okay, let's start. So flat top, uh, and then we get a little band there that holds the clip. The clip is fairly firm but springy so quite usable and is a decent sort of shape for use. Uh, the cap swells out ever so slightly and then we get this very interesting cap band with these kind of like little um, like um, balls or dimples or something on the edges of it and then the uh, band that says Tianzi China. Um, then the body of the pen continues out. It's going to be fairly cylindrical because the nature of the uh, piston filling mechanism, uh, needing sort of parallel walls, get another ring and then the piston knob, which has a flat end. Now, piston filling pen, I'm not going to operate the piston because it is filled with ink right now. But basically the idea is, is you turn that knob when the you dip the, pe I should say, the pen unscrews uh, and it screws in two turns. Um, and when the way you fill it is you put the nib up to, you know, past the breather hole into a bottle of ink, you turn the knob, it puts a, pushes a piston down, pushing the air out, and then when you turn the knob the other way, it pulls the piston back up, and that vacuum create that is created by that draws ink up into the pen. So, once you have unscrewed the cap, you've got some fairly smooth basic threads, and then a section that tapers down to a flare, and then sort of a kind of roughly number six size nib, I think, uh, with Tianzi, and this is a medium. The nib does look familiar to a Yovo kind of nib, or, you know, sort of like a Schmidt, or, you know, one of those kinds of nibs, and it writes very, very well, as we'll see later. There are a range of different colours available. Um, if you go onto uh, the Instagram, which I will link to down below, uh, or onto Etsy, which I will also link down below, you can see what other materials are available at any given time. Um, but it's a nice, uh, you know, acrylic resin material, nice sort of light patches, um, and a nice sort of amount of depth to it. It comes in two nib variations, a fine and a medium. As I said, I have the medium here. Tianzi say the pen does not post, and technically they are right, and technically they are wrong. Technically they are wrong because the pen does actually post onto there. It makes for a very long pen and quite a back-weighted pen, so it's not ideal. Uh, but also, you are posting it onto the piston knob there. And this isn't one of those piston knobs like a ratchet or, you know, the little slots you put it in to lock it in place. If you twist this cap, you are going to spurt ink out the pen you're going to activate that piston. So not recommended to post this at all. One thing Tianzi are really interested in doing uh, is the balance of vintage versus modern. Um, and I think that's a really nice 
you know, sort of concept to go for. And you can see that in this pen, you know, traditional filling systems such as the piston, nice material, simple, elegant design and shape, uh, but new to them uh, and done their way. So obviously this is a Chinese made pen. Tianzi is a Chinese company and it sort of follows in the footsteps of brands like Pen BBS who have made these sort of acrylic pens. Um, personally, in my opinion, and I'll state this early on in the review here, I prefer this to a number of the Pen BBS pens. I think uh, the nib is certainly better. I've always had issues uh, with the Pen BBS nibs being a little bit sort of a little too feedbacky, a little bit grippy. Not exactly my favourite, whereas I like the nib in this. I like the design and the weight of this. Um, I also like the fact that the piston works all the time. A number of the Pen BBS pens I've had, the pistons are uh, in different formats, even down to like the vac filling or the, um, the bulk filler, uh, things like that. They have had issues activating and using the mechanism. This works perfectly. I've had no troubles with it whatsoever. The Tianzi... T01 or piston filled fountain pen, depending on which uh, where you read or who you speak to, um, retails at 56 Australian dollars, um, which puts it in a very nice place in the market, in my opinion, particularly for a pen made uh, to this sort of quality. Uh, it is available through Etsy or through other uh, Chinese online retailers. Um, all you have to do is Google the pen to find it uh, at other retailers other than the Etsy, which I will link to. Um, and I think it's a, yeah, it's a well-made pen at a well-positioned price point. Size comparison now with the traditional Lamy Safari that everyone is so wonderfully familiar with. You can see it's a longer pen. It is considerably longer, uh, about half a centimetre longer than the Lamy Safari when it is capped. Uncapped, which is what Tianzi say is the correct way of writing with this pen, uh, it is still a little longer than the Lamy Safari, but getting sort of closer uh, in length. You can also see the girth of the section is similar to that of the Lamy Safari, but it is a round section, unlike the triangular section of the Safari. Posted, you can see it's even longer again. As I said, they do not suggest you post this pen. It is postable if that is what you want to do. It is suggested you don't, and that would be my recommendation as well. The dimensions of the Tianzi uh, fountain pen are 146 millimeters when it is capped. Uncapped, it's 133, so it's a decent size. The fact that it is a piston mechanism means that the balance of the pen is at both ends, uh, giving it a, a sort of reasonable feel in the hand. It's not back heavy, not to, you know front heavy. Uh, you've got mechanism up here that operates it, and then you've got like all the mechanism and then the uh, the piston the feed and the nib and all that kind of stuff down this end. If anything, it is a little back weighted, uh, but not so much because it's not super big in your hand. Uh, you don't feel it being back weighted. Although when you post it, yeah, you feel that. And at uh, 178 millimeters, it's pretty long. The section uh, here ranges from about nine to 11 millimeters. So it's fine. It's a, it's a fairly decent taper though. And to, down towards the end, it does start to feel a bit narrow, but you're not gonna run off that with that little flare there. You will feel it, um, but it's not, and it's not super slippery either being just a plain plastic section. The pen weighs 29 grams, 18 in the body and 11 in the cap. Um, so it's a fairly decent weighted pen uh, and a pretty good balanced when it is uncapped. We'll do a writing sample now with the Tianzi. And uh, this is my traditional Clairefontaine 90 gram paper. As I said, it is sometimes referred to as the T01. Um, which I assume just means Tianzi pen number one, which is a very simple, you know, way of going about it. The nib here is a steel medium. As I said, it writes very similar and feels and looks very similar to a nib like a Yovo nib, for instance. Uh, the ink I have in this today is backpack ink. Oh, I went to write bank, backpack dot ink and this is um, one of my favorites of theirs it is the Dublin green such a great green not dissimilar to a Mont Blanc ink with a similar name um, but a little lighter perhaps uh, and certainly more available and more affordable okay um, let's do some writing
So you can see I've done both a more aggressive printed font and then a more a slightly more sort of cursive, you know, legato font. Uh, and it handles both beautifully. Quick writing. Slight little skip there, but that was pretty aggressive and no one's going to write that fast. Reverse writing. It's not too bad. It's fairly smooth. It's got, you know, it's a little drier and finer, of course. You probably wouldn't last very long, but it is possible. This is not a flex nib. You push down, you are just pushing more ink out. You are not, you know, flexing the tines. Uh, in terms of wetness, I don't think there's anything on the world to complain about. Uh, to complain about with this pen. You can see it handles writing well. It is smooth. There's a slight bit of feedback, nothing too pronounced. Um, it handles fast writing, print, you know, sort of more cursive styles, and it is generally quite a wet pen. Let's talk pros and cons now for the Tianzi fountain pen, piston filled fountain pen. The uh, only cons I really have, firstly, is that it is limited availability at the moment. Um, I think this will increase and improve, uh, but you know, when I say limited, it's still available all the time and from a number of retailers, um, so it's actually not doing too badly. The other issue I have, and this is purely probably personal, and this is on an aesthetic level, is that I don't think the cap band, uh, the cap band matches the pen. You've got these very simple rings at either end, which keep it nice and you know symmetrical and balanced, and a fairly sort of like bold but um, you know not particularly sort of fancy or ornate nib and then you get the cap band um, and I think the cap band with those little like ridges or um, I'm not sure how focused I can get it on there with that kind of design around the edges of the cap band just to me feels a little out of place. Um, a simple cap band with Tianzi China would look great on this pen um, or include some sort of feature that includes this sort of design, like on the clip, like run the line of that down the middle of the clip or something, you know, like simple personal aesthetic. It's just a little bit out of place. Pros for this pen, obviously the price. It's at a very, very good price point for the pen that you are getting. Um, and by that, I mean, it's a piston feel. It has a good nib. It writes beautifully um, and, you know, reliably and it's smooth and it's wet and all of those kinds of things. Um, I think the material is really nice and the other colors of this are beautiful There's a couple of beautiful blues and things that are really absolutely gorgeous um, I think the balance of the pen in the hand is very nice It's a very comfortable pen to write with for long periods of time You never feel those threads or the steps or anything. It's very comfortable because you've got a good size section and a decent sized pen um, and that's another, another actually really great pro for me is the size of this pen. It's very comfortable in the hand. I think, you know, you'd be very hard pressed to find someone whose hand is so big. I only have average size hands. Uh, someone whose hands are so big that this pen wouldn't be able to be written with uh, like this. Um, because even if, you know, you drop it back a further inch and a half, you're still at a point where you could write quite comfortably with this pen uh, because the balance and the size is fairly good. So as I've said, I actually think this is one of the nicest uh, Chinese fountain pens I've written with in a while, or new fountain pens I've written with. Um, it is in that sort of price point around the pen BBS range. We're not talking about like the low end Jinhao's and Wing Sung's and things like that. This is in that like acrylic turned, like this can't be injection molded. You can't do injection molded with this kind of material. So these are all turned. They're all like, there's a bit more that goes into these and that's why you, you do spend a little bit more. Also, it's got a really great nib on it, so I think it's worth it. Um, so this was the Tianzi Piston Fountain Pen, or the T01. Um, a great step into the fountain pen world from this company. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do more in, in the future, uh, in terms of the designs and keeping the piston or you know, moving to other filling systems as well. I think it's great. Um, so hats off to them. Um, support this company. You know, Look for them. This isn't a, you know... We talk about Chinese fountain pens in two realms, like the real pens, which I think this is, and then things like, you know, the cheap copies and all that kind of stuff. This, to me, uh, feels a lot more than those, certainly. So support it and give it a whirl. It's a beautiful pen and it writes beautifully and I've really enjoyed using it so far and will continue to. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below.
You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, like Tianzi did by providing this pen for uh, review here today, um, I would really love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.